So, I guess the first question I have for you is, how does it feel to operate a business that's under continuous attack from the President of the United States? <laughs> well, look, it, it, I've been in journalism for more than 30 years. Um, politicians attacking the media is not a new thing. Um, it's unusual for it to be this feisty, this early in the cycle. And we certainly had this very interesting moment early on a Sunday morning, a few days after the election, when uh, the president-elect started tweeting not about our coverage, but about our business and saying that our, our audiences were collapsing, our subscriptions were collapsing. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, you know, conference call, half past seven, eight o'clock in the, in the morning on a Sunday. Right we decided the right thing to do was simply to rebut it, to say, to go out our, ourselves on Twitter and elsewhere, just to say, this simply isn't true. Right. Uh, and in a weird way, what, what's happened to us is that the, the broader narrative about, about the president saying either things which are reckless or said without evidence or are no, no, known to be untrue applies to us as well. So you were early to the trends. Yeah. Um, and I guess it was sort of a relief for Dean Baquette because now he's like, hey, that, he's talking about the business side, right? He, he's not attacking my editorial. This is all you, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, do you feel, obviously there's a lot of vociferous, uh, um, you know, stuff going on with the president and his supporters. Uh, so do you feel business pressure to appeal, you know, more sympathetic to the views of Trump supporters? I mean, we, we look at the, the hiring of Brett Stevens, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the opinion section printed a notice that said, you know, if, you, if the president's done something nice today, please let us know, that kind of thing. And so do you feel like the business-wise, it's a smart decision to appeal to those readers? No, I, d I don't think that's what's going on at all, really. Um, and, and I don't think anyone could look at the New York Times and say that if you look at the Times as a complete journalistic product, that it's been created <laughs> To, to make the president happy. That's simply not the case. Um, what is true is that James Bennett, my colleague who's the editorial page editor in charge of editorials and opinion and so on, um, James is on a mission to broaden the range of opinions that are available to users of the Times. So they get a real sense of the range of opinion, not because they're meant to agree. I mean, the, the point about opinion pages, you don't want to agree with all the opinions. It's meant to expose you to the debate. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find, um, you know, where, uh, Brett Thurard, a great writer, um, Pulitzer Prize winner from the Wall Street Journal. I think you'll see some other fresh uh, voices as well. And I, 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 I expect you'll see some voices, as it were, further to the left of the, of the mainstream of New York Times opinion, as well as to the right. So to me, this is more about in a moment of great division in the country, can, can the New York Times be a platform for diversity of opinion and for the debate to happen? Um, yeah, okay, cool. I, I, I mean, I think that's a valid point. We'll come back to that, because I actually have, th there's some other stuff there that, that related to the business side that I think is yeah. interesting, because if you, if you have this situation where you are leaning into the subscription model, I mean, you've had some success with subscriptions, uh, I think, uh, uh, $442 million in digital revenue and subscriptions were something like 61% of that. Is that correct? Yeah, that feels right. That feels directionally okay. right, certainly. Um, and by the way, that, that looks at the two core uh, digital revenue streams. It doesn't look at the crosswords, doesn't look at the acquisitions, doesn't look at the digital archive. The, the full digital number is rather higher than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if there's such a, if that model has really transitioned hard, which it seems it has, yeah. you crossed the Rubicon in like 2012 or something, in terms of subscription revenue over over the other revenue, uh, ads and such. If you tr transition there, why is there such a focus on this perceived balance when a subscription model is really driven by like that reader passion, like they're speaking to me and to my ideals, um, rather than overall reach? Well, I think, I think uh, what I want to say is that Adolf Ox, when he bought the New York Times in 1895, talked about the Times as being a place for intelligent debate. For, for, uh, to be an environment where people could, could discuss and argue about public policy and all the rest of it. And I think we think that's our mission. So, in, in, I mean, I would say our business model mm -hmm. is based around the idea of the Times' mission rather than based on a kind of cynical calculation about different kinds of audience. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, if we uh, are 
more empathetic to the, the opinions of certain readers, that will result in a, a, a result on our balance sheet. But instead, it's... I, I think that readers of the Times would be horrified if they thought that we were um, censoring opinion or adjusting opinion on the basis of, like, a PowerPoint um, uh, uh, graph showing right. the propensity of I mean, I've been in those debate. meetings. I mean, it's difficult to, to say no, and, you know, but it... it well, uh, all I say is, I mean, it, it, if there was a debate there, I'd be on the side of the newsroom and the editorial department, not on the, in quotes, business side. Right. I never know quite what's meant by the business. I mean, yeah. we've got commercial divisions. Yeah. But it seems to me one of the obvious points about digital is that you need a strategy which is an integration of content strategy and audience engagement strategy. And in a way, if you can get your audience engagement right, the actual business of turning an engaged audience into money is, is a very downstream and in some ways a less difficult, less critical task. The real task is getting people's passionate engagement with the brand, with the content, and just coming to you often enough and caring about you enough that you can make them willing to pay.